I'm not sure what I've gotten myself into. I'm a little bit nervous, but should be fun. Dreyer-Luda, Chair of Drama, although I'm other things besides Chair of Drama, so that's not my only identity. Hi, my name is Sherry Steele, and I'm just about to do the Secret in the Winds Challenge video. Uh, hi, my name is Natalie Loveless. I am a professor in the Department of Art and Design. I teach the history of art, design, and visual culture. I'm also a wife and mother, by the way. I'm not just Chair of Drama. Um, and a human who happens to love dogs. Um, my position for uh, this production has been as the singing vocal coach. So I've got these cards here and I have to do them one at a time. Um, I haven't looked at them yet, so uh, here we go. So you can see I've got my envelope. Not opened it yet. And my timer. Inside it. Here we go. In 30 seconds, what is your relationship to fairy tales? Go. Um, I remember a book of fairy tales from when I was small that my dad gave me. They were kind of world fairy tales. I think it was a Norton or Penguin, Penguin book of world fairy tales. Well, um, my grandmother used to read them to me when I was a child. I grew up reading fairy tales um, with my parents and grandparents. And he used to read me all of these strange fairy tales um, from international places that I had never been and barely imagined that all really freaked me out. I fell in love with them and loved reading them and loved reading everything. In fact, uh, sci-fi, fantasy, particularly dystopian literature is a real interest of mine. It's kind of a secret that I don't tell lots of people. I was particularly intrigued by mm, I'm going to say the story of Cinderella, probably because it was represented by a Disney, but also probably because my mother personally set out to dispel, to disavow me of any such um, uh, notions of a prince coming to make my life awesome. And then I had a collection of these um, Andrew Lang, uh, four books of Andrew Lang fairy tales. Uh, they also freaked me out. Um, so uh, my relationship to fairy tales, ah, they're, they're scary. Oh gosh, I've passed 30 seconds. Okay, and then I discovered the show Into the Woods and I fell in love with it. And then I played the role of Cinderella and it changed my life, eh, done, okay. My grandmother's interest in reading to me is something that, um, oh, I think I've done this wrong. Stop, stop, people, stop. But clearly, I blasted through the 30 seconds because I set my timer on 30 minutes. Pause, stop, okay. In 30 seconds, tell the story of Beauty and the Beast. Interesting. Oh, gosh. <sighs> <laughs> Beauty and the Beast is, uh, is a fable wherein we are encouraged to uh, look at beyond what's on the surface and explore what's deeper within and what is of value in people. So, so this chick who's probably a princess of some king goes to stay at this castle. There's um there's a a a, a beast and a and a and a a beauty. There's a beast that's in charge and she doesn't like it and I have no idea why she's there. I don't do Disney so I'm, I'm at a real disadvantage here. If the beast gets the beast, is it like a version of the like the frog and the princess? Like if the beast gets the beauty to fall in love with him he turns into a prince again and there's a singing candlestick. A quote unquote beautiful young girl is uh, enslaved to a horrible 
beast and how could these two uh, disparate entities love each other? Well, it comes to, to the core of the human spirit. Oh, oh gosh, and, and she kisses him and he turns into a prince or something. I think that's about as much as I know of Beauty and the Beast. 30 seconds, okay, good. <laughs> if you could blend Beauty and the Beast with any other fairy tale, what would it be and why? And here we're assuming that I actually know fairy tales. Let's say um, the uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, so that Beauty and the Beast is not about um, this woman discovering, is that what it's about? The, the inner prince in the beast that she loves, but it's actually about testing men and determining whether they're too little for her, too much for her, or just right. Uh, the princess and the frog, because I think they are the same story and what they are asking us to do in this weird gender dynamic in which the girl is always the beauty is um, to look beyond appearances and trust our love and our gut. I've already disclosed to you that my favorite show favorite musical probably or the most um, impactful musical that I've been involved with and been exposed to is Into the Woods which is all fairy tales melding together and we could totally work Beauty and the Beast into that story. Let's put Beauty and the Beast into Into the Woods. Okay Stephen Sondheim you're not dead yet I challenge you. What is my favorite fairy tale? I clearly don't have one. Uh, I love the story of the little red hen. It, it's something that uh, I often reference in my life. And the little red hen is about uh, a hen who wants to grow some corn and have a harvest. And each stage of this harvest, she asks for help. And none of the animals in the farmyard help her until the very end when she sets the food on the table and they're willing to help eat it. So you need to help make it if you want to help eat it. That's the story of the little red hen. Ah, right in 30 seconds. <laughs> How do you feel the challenge is going so far? Well, I think the challenge is doing fine. I think I'd give myself a B minus. Mm, I wish you'd ask me to like mash up my favorite philosophers or artists or um, create a new performance art piece or something. It was going great until I was forced to pick a favorite. Favorite? Favorite? Come on now. That's like saying, who's your favorite composer? What's your favorite show? What's your favorite play? What's your favorite color? I don't believe in favorites. Sorry. What is a fairy tale that doesn't exist but should? Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. The fairy tale that doesn't exist but should is the fairy tale of all people who struggle with mental illness. We really seem to be missing empathy and love for one another and, that, and and especially for ourselves. And I would love a fairy tale that helps us recognize that through, through symbolism and metaphor and all sorts of analogies. So that would be my fairy tale. I don't think I really know what counts as a fairy tale. So I'm gonna go to the last one. I, there's one more, I wonder what it could be. You're done, how do you feel it went? I don't know how it went, I never know. But this has been a really thought-provoking challenge and I'm, I'm grateful to have been a part of it. It wasn't boring, it was fun, thank you. It was fun, it really was fun. It was imperfect, as am I, um, but I had fun playing. Thanks for listening, you guys. <laughs>